What's up guys, how are you guys doing today? So as you can already see, today is Tuesday, which means we got statistics today. So this is nice. Just logging in to my stuff right now. So we should be good to go. How's everyone doing today? I'm good? I would hope so. So yeah, I got the notes out. And I'm ready for this stuff. So, as you guys can currently see, I wrapped up statistics and now I'm in pre-calculus class, so um, I've still got like a few minutes left before we actually start doing anything, so I'm just chillaxing here, just, yeah, looking at this, apparently that's what we're going to do, because I have two more exams this week, you guys, <laughs> two more, can you believe it, oh my god. Value. Is number, number of, of years, years since 2000. In the test, I would do exactly what I'm doing right now. Identify these things. So, what does the expression 3 times g of 6 represent? Well, identifying the output and the input really helps. Because we know that that 6, what is that 6 inside of there? 2000. 6 years since 2000, right? Because 6 is the input. So, we can say 6 years since 2000 or 2006, right? But g of 6, this whole thing represents an output quantity. Short times tuition. What did you say? Short times tuition. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to get to the three parts there in a second. But the, just the g of 6 represents what? Uh, the 6 inside tells us the number of years, right? Because that's the input. But the g of 6 is the output. The cost, the cost, of, the cost of tuition in 2006, right? Yeah, I could have just used D. That's just a fancy way of saying what that's the function of D resistance. And then we have the rule. What is the meaning? What is the meaning of f of 7 minus f of 3? All right, so in your groups, chat about what f of 7 represents and what f of 3 represents, and then we'll come back together. Go ahead. So pretty much f of 7 is the input. Uh, is the output of when the input is 7 and f of 3 is basically the output of 1 and 3 is the input pretty much I mean no real way to no other way to say it yeah no is the change in it proportional to the change in t yes absolutely by definition of constant rate of change right by definition of constant rate of change, we know the change in n is going to be the phi and the x, the phi to everything inside of there. So negative 5 squared I know is 25x squared. 
you guys can clearly see, I got over here with Tuesday, filmed some stuff for pre capitalist so that was cool. And as you currently see, I'm in my lab coat, which means we're in camera lab. So yeah, unlike bio lab, which kind of basically snubbed me because I didn't even realize I didn't have a bio lab on Monday. We have a chem lab, so that's currently good. Got the computer set up, got the gang already, so let's do, let's go, let's do this. So yeah, if I look a little out of breath, that's because I had to run over here I, because tr traffic was bad and I was getting late, so. But thankfully, we did, nothing started, so we're all good. Okay guys, so as you currently see, we're doing a lab, uh, we're experimenting with assets and bases today. So that's some pretty fun stuff. And um, uh, this took a look, so, and originally I was supposed to use blue litmus paper, but I accidentally used green and then we're supposed to use that next week, so. But it's all good, we used the blue, managed to get the results we wanted, and yeah, we got the stuff over there, so. Yeah, that's good. So yeah. And now, we figure out chemical formulas. Yay! <laughs> okay guys, so as you currently see, I wrapped up my chem lab and now uh, I wrapped it up early, which is good. So I got like a few minutes, I'm just relaxing and feeling a little bit sleepy, so I'm gonna drink this before my lecture. And um, yeah. I'll record, as always, I will record some stuff for you guys to see, so you guys can get to know how I feel, so. <laughs> but yeah, today's really nice out. I don't even need, like, my jacket anymore. And we are at Kim Lecture, so, well, so actually we ha have, like, a few minutes left to go, like, um, about five minutes, more or less, so, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna be waiting here. Got the computer all set up. Oh, wait, you probably should not be able to see that. Um, but yeah, that, apparently they're gonna give us a little demonstration over there. And uh, yeah, got some, got some regular stuff up there that they're gonna tell us. So yeah, that should be pretty fun. Things that we see whenever we're uh, doing our chemistry. And then we're gonna end with what calculations can we do with it? So this is where we are going to see uh, it's almost like a subset. It's almost like saying, look, these are combination reactions, but a better description is combustion. Because what we end up seeing with a combustion reaction is that you have a reaction between a combustible material and something that oxidizes it and rapidly produces either heat or a flame or a glow or has some kind of release of energy of some kind. Now, the most common type of combustion you guys are familiar with is the combustion of hydrocarbons. A hydrocarbon is any compound comprised of carbon and hydrogen, okay? It can also be a carbohydrate, which means that in addition to the carbon and hydrogen, you have an oxygen, and it typically reacts with oxygen in the air as an oxidizer. It's where it kind of that. Well, and this, this is a propane torch. Um, so propane is a hydrocarbon. What you're seeing right now, this is the lighting of the torch, is a combustion reaction. So this is always a favorite, we'll see this again, but if you kind of look up here, um, whenever, like on the uh, board, you'll actually be able to see some of the gas being released. So here, well, if you've seen gas released as water vapor, a lot of energy, basically what we should be seeing here is something with heat or light in, in addition to the energy. So we're gonna have this rapid expansion of gases, but we're also going to have the hydrogen ignite or combust by adding just a little bit of heat. So here we go, are you guys ready? Do it. Oh, it's do it. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. one. Oh, that was a good was one. That was fun. Woo! Woo! Are you guys ready? Here we go. Yep. Let there be light. Whoa. I mean, it does, it does combust pretty quickly, but it's very bright. You definitely need protective eyewear when you're looking at this. I look at it and then I've seen spots all day. It's probably, probably shouldn't wear my own sunglasses. But there we go. And if you uh, were to look at this now, it's very white. We have this uh, white powdery substance. That's the production of the magnesium oxide. Okay. We have, um, so here, this is a picture to kind of remind you about that one. Uh, you put something like potassium, potassium permanganate into uh, glycerin, 
it can make a very, um, uh, this is really important in like grain silos when you're storing a lot of grain and produces a lot of dust in the air, you have just a spark and it can combust and your whole grain silo can go up in flames. Well, I mean, we're doing combustion. We have to do experiments, right? It's so much better when you can see it in real life, right? All right, so I don't want you to think that combustion reactions are only between carbohydrates and oxygens. That, that it, or um, NaCl actually exists in solution as Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. They don't exist together in a formula unit of Na and Cl together, right? In solution, it's creating a weak base. It only partially dissociates. It doesn't like to fully dissociate. It likes to stay as ammonia for the most part, okay? So if you don't have a strong or a weak electrolyte, then you're going to have a non-strong electrolyte. So when we put it into solution, it's going to turn on that light bulb very, very brightly. Alright? Because it puts two ions in solution, the more ions you put in solution, this actually doesn't conduct electricity. Okay? If you're not going to take a bath and spill water. So that's a non-electrolyte. Okay? Now, here I have solid sodium chloride. Now it says table salt. Got some Morton's. Right? Iodized salt. What is this going to do? It's going to light a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Probably light. Is it going to light the light bulb? <laughs> Maybe um, say yes. No? Um, I don't know. Very good, you're listening. All right, so here it doesn't light the light bulb because why? It's, it's, it's not soluble yet. It's a solid, right? It's not going to conduct electricity. It's a non electrolyte. But what happens, just to make sure I don't electrocute like myself, I'm doing this. What happens when I take my distilled water and I add salt to it? What do you think is going to happen to this light bulb? It's going to get really bright because now we have aqueous, the soluble ionic compound, into water. So let's see. Ooh. And the more I pour in here, the brighter that light bulb gets. Right? It's very nice, very visual, right? Okay, so soluble sodium chloride. It's going to be a strong electrolyte. Do you see the difference? It has to be solubilized in order for it to actually conduct electricity, right? The ions have to be free, not involved in ionic bonds. It's probably going to do something. Let's see. Get it in the middle? Yeah. What would you guys call that? Uh, weak? Yeah, probably good. I call that weak. weak. Right, because like the strong I'm really looking at like what we saw with like the HCl or the NaOH. Okay, so hopefully this has helped you kind of like get into your mind like what we're talking about with electrolytes. So when you guys come back, and we'll talk about the reality. Okay guys, so as you can currently see, um, I wrapped up my uh, chemistry, my chem lecture, and right now I will, and so I had lunch, which was basically just a uh, medium fry from Chick-fil-A, but it's all good, and um, I've been doing some practice problems, because I have an exam tomorrow for statistics, and another exam for pre-calculus. I swear ASU is trying to kill me with exams this week. I've had two exams on Monday, and I have two more tomorrow. <laughs> so, thank you ASU, but screw you at the same time. <laughs> but anyways, I'm just prepping myself, and I have um, another uh, class. I think it's chem recitation, and then I have like an hour and ten minutes uh, for a break so, uh, after that until I get to my bio lecture, which is my final class of the day. So you're going to get to see that. And um, speaking of which, I'm going to have to get over to my recitation class now. So you guys are going to get to see that. All right, guys. So as you currently see, I'm at my recitation class. Um, I'm doing some stuff with um, different types of reactions and how those all work. So it's just nice. I already did three activities. Got 100% on them with a partner. So that's seemed pretty good. And yeah, we're on the last one. And hopefully after that, I get to leave and probably stay for a couple more exams. Okay. Okay guys, so as you currently see, I wrapped up my chemistry recitation and I managed to leave early so I could do a little bit more studying for statistics. Oh, it's not, no, please, ah, there we go. Okay, so some more studying for statistics. 
but um, I'm about like halfway done with like this uh, review thing or whatever, so that's good. But and I have a few minutes. I think I'm gonna just gonna go ahead, get my stuff ready, and have a, head over to my bio class, and then that'll be the end of the vlog. So as always, I'm gonna record as much as I can for you guys to watch. So you get to see that. As you guys can currently see, I am at my bio lecture now, yay! So, that's good for you guys, and surprisingly, I'm actually going to be doing the class if everybody does too badly, like, does too well. So I'm a little depressed, like, I still feel needed, because you guys think they're too good, you know? So, it's pretty high out of a lot of A's, a lot of B's, and so that's great. So, yeah, so then we should have, at the end of the week, those extra credit questions graded. So your score should only go up or stay the same. Okay, so good work. Um, we're going to continue today talking about evolution and natural selection, and we're kind of we're, we're moving into talking about speciation. But those are, I think it'll help us to continue this discussion of evolution and natural selection a little bit and before we kind of move into the topic of speciation. Um, so look, this is too bright. Can you guys see that well enough? Let me see the direct play. There we go. I can make, I can dial it down. There we go. Oh, it's getting darker. Are you going to watch a movie? The Zoom chat was gonna say something stupid, but okay. LA not today. Alright, here we go. Oh, and it's gone. Okay. Let's stop so. so, you guys said? So, most people said no, and no is the correct answer. It would not be possible. Oh my yeah. god, I got that wrong. Get two about how many out of every movie today, they, they figured out genetically all the things that come from this three hundred fifty million genome That's very small. Another really interesting example of this is the Anabaptists. And the Anabaptists, these are, this is a, mostly in America and also in Canada, but mostly in America and Canada, a little bit in Mexico. They're the Amish, Mennonites, and Hutterites, okay? Okay, we gotta do this, okay? How do I do this on Zoom? New share. New share, okay, new, new share. Share sound, okay, thank you, okay. Okay, we gotta do this, okay, here we go. Let's think about life and death and struggle for survival, y'all. Oh, boy. What up, buddy? It's the big snow dog. Let's watch some more animals. Oh, there we go. Little cute little lizard. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Cute little lizard. <laughs> Snakes are straight assholes. You can tell the way they look. Uh oh. Uh oh. Got their necks up. That means they're coming to Oh, uh, it's gonna die. You see what's happening. But you understand me? One thing about a lizard, I think he had a guy come. He he got he he's gonna run. Oh, he ain't gay right now. He's saying it. He's saying it. You watch. Oh, get out of there, man. Go. Oh. <laughs> oh, they come from everywhere, cuz. This is crazy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, look, look at him. He's going so fast. Oh, they oh, got him. and. The twist is on, but they twist and they sell. And they're gonna suffocate find it. Find the loophole. Ooh, he just managed to get out. Go, 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 go. He's jumping. He's very well trained in escape tactics, as you can see. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Like that. Oh. Jump, 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 run, run. Ooh, managed to escape again. Aww. Yeah, because I'm up on the top of the mountain. It reminds me of my own voice when they were from the police. Clean getaway, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like that, subscribe. I've been seeking answers to how species arise by focusing on one of the smaller islands called Daphne Major. When we started out, we had uh, no plan. 
There have been many instances in, in history where science has been misapplied, you know, or incorrectly applied, and has resulted in abuse. So uh, there is the famous case, the basically um, what's called social Darwinism. So like, in the early 20th century. I'm going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching today's vlog. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to like this video. And um, if you want to keep seeing more content from me, definitely do subscribe. You know, that little red button down there. Make sure you click it so you keep watching more content from me. And share if you want someone else to see this video. I don't know. And as always, if you want to see more content that in, isn't on my YouTube channel, then of course I will always leave a link down below in the description for you guys to check out my social media. Or if, or if you want to follow me on, let's say, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. So anyways, that's going to be all. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.